joy flight. My father's stories must be provoked from him by some landslide of sorrow, a lost city's foundations revealed by shifting earth. Only after the death of two brothers does he relate some childhood moment of a Sunday after mass when a tiger moth touched down on a patch of ground, offering joy flights. I see them, those three blonde boys taut with longing, that silver machine, the sky. My father remembers the sum of money required for the three boys to go up and his own father's face closed and abashed after he asked the pilot. He turned away and my father steeled himself the walk home to lunch. Yet somehow his father was carrying the money and somehow he decided they flew. Disaster could have struck and sent my grandmother mad with grief. My grandfather would have been condemned to watch that from the ground forever. But nothing went wrong. They flew and returned safely to the earth, transformed. An awestruck moment in a poor childhood. Desire made real. A stern father hiding his smile on the run home. Everyone who witnessed that event is dead now. My father handed me the story, a small, recovered legacy, glinting and bright with disuse. And now I carry those three buffeted, grinning children in their Sunday clothes, hardly able to believe their luck, astonished by joy and flight. I hold this and yearn to write fiction in the face of these deaths and losses, in the face of all that is forgotten and revealed by the stark shift of pain and surprise. I want to carry this talisman, carved like a rune, for my father, for my uncles, for my grandfather, and for that pilot, for that pure, torn open moment where they each slipped free of the earth. Fiction, which is the ribbon pulled from a trembling mouth, which tells its truth with such defiance that everything forgotten will blaze, every joy burnished. Every recollection of unexpected flight shared and passed from hand to cupped hand, carried warm next to the skin, recited for courage. <laughs>